Make it over to Mickey. Well, let's wait until the pot goes round. I'm not going <laughs> to compete with addicts being asked for their money. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Come on, get it out. You knew it was coming. <laughs> oh, sorry. The chuck Jake. Chuck there. Do you need a five minute warning? Yeah. What, 20 minutes? 25. Yeah, 20 is good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name's Mickey Bush. I'm a fully conceded addict. Hello Mickey. ADD, ICT, anybody doing drugs in compulsive trouble. <clears throat> anybody would know what I mean by that? Who knows what I mean by that? Not the rest of you? You don't know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ADD, ICT, IONS, anybody doing drugs in compulsive trouble is our newcomer. So we want to include everybody, be inclusive, not exclusive, you know. And so I welcome those folks that are new and coming back and um, give you the, the benefit of uh, a friendly warning like you gave me all those years ago. I'm thrilled and delighted to be here, as a matter of fact, and uh, I'm having a little gratitude attack. You know, I have gratitude attacks all the time. Anybody know what I mean by gratitude? <laughs> Anybody know what I mean by gratitude attack? <laughs> Where you just come over just so thrilled and just like when you're like hugging your kid or something, you know. I get them all the time. You know, I, I've been clean coming up on 34 years and uh, it's more thrilling today than it's ever been. It's more thrilling, I'm more exhilarated to be among you today than I've ever been. It's, and, I, and, I, and I come and I do things like this simply to let you know that it's worth sticking around here. And you may be a newcomer now, and we want you to keep coming back. But we want you to keep coming back to learn how to become a sticker and a stayer. Become a sticker and a stayer, not just a keep coming backer. People literally fall into the trap of being a keep coming backer. And they go, like, clean, fucked up, come back. Clean, fucked up, come back. Clean, fucked up, come back. Clean, fucked up. And then sometimes they don't come back. Happens a lot. Happens a lot to us. Never ever gotten um, used to this disease killing God's kids. Never ever gotten used to it. So we want you to keep coming back. I love the, the beautiful book. This is such a good book. Anybody read this book? Who reads this book? Just us? Not all them? Nobody else? Nobody reads this book? None of you lot read this book? None of it, none of it. Look, they don't read a book. <laughs> don't worry, I see in a lot of NA meetings and the book don't even get quoted. Never mind, uh, yeah, it doesn't get mentioned, never mind quoted. But I want to quote something from it tonight. We talked and listened to others. <coughs> we saw other people recovering and they told us what was waking them, working for them. We began to see evidence of some power that could not be fully explained. Confronted with this evidence, we began to accept the existence of a power greater than ourselves. We can use this power long before we understand it. You know, right here, right now in this meeting is a power greater than ourselves, like it says in step two. Right here, right now is a power greater than ourselves that we can absolutely depend upon to not have to have a use up today. And this power that's in rooms like this, all over the world, is a power that we can take out there and combat the power of the disease. Because this disease is cunning, baffling and powerful. It is a power that will make you do what you already don't want to do. You will do what you don't want to do. Anybody know what I'm talking about? See, this disease makes me do what I already don't want to do. And I can't not do it just because I don't want to. I've got to not want to do it and then do these steps in this work so that I don't do what I already don't want to do. And if I ain't doing these steps in this work or ain't done these steps in this work, I will do what I don't want to do because the disease i got that I'm powerless over will make me do what I don't want to do. You think I knew that shit when I got here? 
<laughs> Never had a clue. Never had a clue. I was so sick when I got to recovery. I was so sick that I didn't know I was sick. Do you know how sick that is? You know how sick it is to be so sick that you don't know you're sick? That's really sick. <laughs> and if you're here tonight wondering whether you is or whether you isn't a real addict or not, you know, because I did, once, even after I got here, I would scan the room I was in and I'd think, well, I'm not as sick as him. Do you know how sick that is? Do you know how sick it is to be in a group full of addicts thinking you ain't as sick as the next guy? That's really sick. So if you're wondering whether you is or whether you isn't a real addict or not, I want you to know I can relate to being as sick as you don't think you are. Really sick. And I never knew. Dying of a disease I didn't even know I had. Now, I'm not an idiot. Don't want to offend any idiots in the room. Any idiots here? I don't mean to offend any idiots, yeah. I'm smart, you know. I'm not just good looking, I'm smart. You know, I've got, I got creds, I've got street creds, I've got academics, for Christ's sake. I've got a PhD. Pretty heavy addict. But anyway, pretty heavy drug addict, that is. Drugs, D-R-U-G-S, devil's revenge upon God's subjects. You know, that's what we got here. You know? And I never knew. I never knew I was dying of untreated addiction. How would I know? I couldn't work it out for myself, and I hadn't come across you guys yet. And there I was, downward spiralling, doing what I'd done. Doing what I'd always done. I don't know why I did it. I never even thought about why I did it. Originally, I came from Harrow on the Hill. And we just drank and used. I mean, I always drank the drug alcohol. I never ever remember not drinking the drug alcohol. You know? Don't know why. Never ever cropped up why. Nobody said you should, nobody said you shouldn't. Everybody just did. You know, we drank if the team won, we drank if the team lost. If it was a tie, we drank till there was a result. We just drank, don't know why. Don't have no idea why. I came to recovery, all you lot knew why you did it. I've heard it here even tonight. People talking about using to cover up the pain and hiding behind who they was. And, and, and I think at what stage of the game do you discover that, for Christ's sake? I couldn't even imagine that. Me, I could not imagine going into any pub I ever drank out and saying to the bartender, bartender, hit me with a triple shot of your best booze because I can't stand who I am and I want to cover up the pain tonight. <laughs> Never happens. Oh, Mr. Dealer man, give me an extra rock of crack cocaine because uh, I really feel inadequate. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened. I have no idea why I do what I do. Okay, I, uh, any, anybody here like cocaine? Anybody like a little cocaine? Yeah. <laughs> any addicts here that different to me? I never <laughs> once come to in the morning and said, Thank God I thought to put this gram aside for the morning. <laughs> Anybody ever do a wake-up call? No, not me. Long, long, long ago I'd forgotten all about the wake-up call. You know, and, and so I, I can remember once being on the phone, once, once, being on the phone to the man, trying to hustle a deal, trying to get a deal, trying to get something for nothing. And I looked down on the floor and in the dirt on the floor was a pill. And I went, oh, look at that. Swooped on this pill, picked it up, looked around for another one. <laughs> An attic. Had no idea what it was. Could have been a bloody dog worming pill for all I know. It was a pill. It might have done something. That's the kind of addict you're talking to here. You know, and uh, I, I don't ever remember, you know, I mean, I did all the good drugs and I did all the bad ones as well. I mean, I, I never even heard the term drug of choice till I came to recovery. Drug of choice? What was a drug of choice? I had no idea what a drug of choice was. Do you use that term over here? Yeah. yeah. Good. Drug of choice? They said, what's your drug of choice? I said, you've got to choose. <laughs> <laughs> or you get to choose. What's a drug of... My drug of choice, if I had one, was yours. <laughs> anything you had was my drug of choice. <laughs> and anything you had was my favourite. <laughs> and that was usually followed by, is it good and will you front me some? You know? I had no idea what any of this was. I mean, I just didn't. I didn't know nothing about anything like that. I mean, I always smoke pot. I love pot. Anybody here smoke a little pot? Anybody smoke a lot? Yeah, no shit. 
I ain't got a problem with pot. You know, pot only does two things to me. It makes me horny, makes me hungry. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Except some mornings you wake up with a sore arm and a bed full of pizza crust. But apart from that, you know, I mean, I don't know nothing about that. I like, you know, I like speed, crystal, crank. Anybody here do a little speed, crystal, crank? No? Nobody ever do cre crystal? Are you kidding? Did it make your dick disappear? <laughs> I mean, I mean I, what kind of addicts have we got here? Nobody does speed, crystal, crank? Damn, I just spoke last, last week, two weeks ago, at the World Crystal Meth Anonymous in Phoenix, Arizona. Shit, it's like epidemic over there, isn't it? Don't you do it here? Fuck. Damn. Half measure fucking merchants. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what about heroin? Anybody do a little dope? <clears throat> Anybody do a lot? Yeah, no shit. I didn't care if, it, you know, I puked, because I'm a puker, you know, I, I puke. But I mean, the only thing that was strong enough to numb me out when I was like Jones in from dope was alcohol, and they would drink alcohol. You know, when we were putting the text together all those years ago, I voted against two things, and that was, you know, talking about alcohol as being different has caused a great many addicts to relapse. The mere fact that the way I'm mentioning it makes it different to, in my way of thinking, so I voted against putting that in. Uh, they didn't take no notice of that. Same as, uh, you know, referring to the newcomer as the most important person in the room. I voted against that too. Fuck that, I'm the most important person in any room I'm in, you know, but we tell lies to newcomers and stuff like that, don't we? Because we want you to keep coming back and we want to encourage you to stick around. But, you know, you know, I don't know nothing about nothing when I get here and everything I do know today is all in retrospect. I didn't know nothing. So if you're new or if you're misunderstanding some of the things that we talk about or if they just go over your head or something, we want you to keep coming back. So because I promise you more will be revealed to you if you stick around to become a small part of this great whole, this great whole of Narcotics Anonymous. You know, magical, magical uh, you know, program. And, and very successful if you stick around and do it. And, and I mean, you know, most important person in the room, like that plays in my head because, you know, because you can only give away, you can only keep what you got by giving it away. If I'm using the newcomer to keep what I got, I can't afford to think that way. I can't afford to use you to, for my advantage. And besides, if, if the newcomer's the most important person in the room, I'm a pubic hair away from making her the most important person. And if she's the most important, I can be the next most important person in the room. I'm in a mess of trouble now, so I can't afford to think along that line. I mean, I get a lot of juice, I get a lot of rah-rah, I get a lot of false praise. Or I've had people here tonight tell me that I saved their life. Well, we all know who saves the lives around here, but if you want to give me the credit, I'll take it. You know, I mean, that's... <laughs> But I, I was just told that I was a 12-step celebrity uh, in, in recovery by two celebrities. I was over at the old home group in San Fernando Valley where I live. I'm from, I, I live in Los Angeles and um, I was visiting the old home group. I always had a home group. My current home group's in Long Beach, California. And uh, two celebrities there, known them, Academy Award winning celebrities, known them a long, long time. They said, oh Mick, I haven't seen you in a while. I said, yeah. Don't live in the neighbourhood anymore, but I thought I'd come and visit the old home group, see how you're all doing. Glad to see everything's going good. One of them said, like, Mick, I didn't realise what a celebrity you become in 12-step fellowship. I said, what are you talking about? She said, like, you're talking everywhere, everybody knows who you are, and, you know... I said, what do you keep going on about that for? She said, well, I'm making a movie in New York, she said, and, then, and I went to two meetings in New York, and in both the meetings, they quoted you, mentioned you by name. You're like this 12-step celebrity. I said, yeah, fucking big deal, a celebrity in an anonymous program. <laughs> you know I said? I said, no, you're a celebrity. I'm just a small part of a great whole, which we're all part of here. Everybody's just as important as everybody else, nobody more important, and we're all just a small part of this power, this power that we got in meetings like this. Power, man, we got a power. This disease is cunning, baffling and powerful, but we got a counteracting power to combat the power of the disease. We never used to have 
alive, but when we came here, we do. Because there's not one person in recovery powerless over their addiction. Not one person in this group here, right here, right now, is powerless over their addiction, if you understand the power, what powerless is and what we got here. I know that sounds, you know, sacrilegious, doesn't it? Perhaps you ain't heard anybody else say that. But we got a power right here, right now, that is so powerful, we can resist the obsession to use. And it's in step two. There's an automatic assumption in step two that a power greater than self is God, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, Muhammad, or any other noun. But it don't say that. It don't even say higher power. It says a power greater than self. And what we got right here is that power greater than self. Me plus you is a power greater than me. You plus us is a power greater than you. Together we can do what I couldn't do alone. I couldn't stay clean, you couldn't stay clean, but together we can stay clean. Is everybody grasping this? Yes? Yeah. Right. And I read in the Bible, the big, big book, B-I-B-L-E, Being Informed Before Leaving Earth. I read it in Chokey when I was in, on bread and water, and they, it said in there, I remember one passage, it said, when any two are gathered in my name, there I will be in your midst. And we say that in our literature, two addicts. Two addicts come together for the purpose of recovery. God comes in our midst and produces a power greater than either of us. So it's produced by us, but it's greater than us, and we can absolutely depend upon it to not have a use up today. You see? One and one make three. Me plus you, you plus me, that's one and one. And God comes in the middle, one and one makes three. That's smart ass, isn't it? You know? But that's the power that we have right here, right now, that, that uh, will restore me to sanity. Now, I know all about insanity, believe me. I'm certified insane in four different countries. All my life I've been locked away in different places. But they didn't tell me what you guys told me. They knew how to bash me up. They knew how to hurt me. They knew how to ch chain me to padded cells and shoot me up with tranks and zap me on electric machines but they didn't know what was wrong with me, and even if they knew, they didn't know how to combat it. They didn't know how, what, what we do here. Didn't have any recovery. Insanity. The insanity that we talk about is not the legal or the dictionary definition of insanity. What we talk about here in recovery is the insanity of repeating the same behavior and expecting a different result. Everybody knows that, right? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, are you asleep? <laughs> repeating the same behavior and expecting a different result. Go back in your history and, ch and check it out. What will happen if you do that again? Insane. But they didn't say that when they came and grabbed my ass. They never came in their white coats and said, we're locking you up for repeating the same behavior and expecting a different result. Insanity. See, that's what we got here. We got a way out so that we don't have to repeat that because we can change. We can change. We have to change, folks. Everybody here, if you be a real addict like me, has to change. It don't matter whether you like it or not. I don't give a shit whether you like it or not. If you don't like it, I'll, t I'll tell you what it means in Russian. Anybody speak Russian? In Russian, they call it Tufsky Shutsky. You know, tough shit. Don't matter. We have to change. You know why we have to change, folks? I'll tell you why we have to change. Because what we already is, the disease is already screwed. What you already are, the disease is already screwed. So if you don't change, the disease will keep screwing you. Anybody kept being screwed by the disease here? Yeah, no shit. You can leave your hand up. I'm going to ask some more questions. Yeah. <laughs> See, we've got we to gotta change. And, and I, in and of myself, I don't know how to change. And even if I did know, who the fuck wants to? Even if I could do this thing on my own, who wants to do it on their own? It's much better to have a group like this and to come and be a small part of a great whole and be a part of a community and stuff like that, isn't it? You know, so we've got to change. We have to change. And anything we don't change, guess what? If you don't change something, you'll repeat it. And if, if you think that's all right, go and ask your loved ones and your family members, is it all right for me to repeat what I've been doing? If they say, yes, we think you're a fine fellow, let me know about it. They didn't with me. I went, no, don't bring that shit back in here. So we've got to change. 
C-H-A-N-G-E. Choosing honesty allows new growth every day. And we've got to change. Having an open mind, folks, having an open mind, people don't see it the same as I do sometimes. We've got to have an open mind to let the old shit out. Never mind letting new shit in. We've got to let the old shit out. You know all that crap that we've been carrying around. Perhaps you don't carry around shit around here in the Priory. You know, we do. You know. So I've got to let all that, I've got to change who I am. And, I, and, and I've got a, a way of living that I can absolutely guarantee. You know, and that's why I tell you, you know, when I came in broke, busted, disgusted and not to be trusted, not knowing nothing about nothing. You know, that's not true today. And, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up because I've got the evil fucking hairy eyeball going here. <laughs> you know? I'd listen to you all night, mate. <laughs> I've, uh, you know, I, um, I, I'm not the same guy that came in all those years ago. And I'm glad about that. Uh, but, you know, I'm a very wealthy man financially and materially, but my greatest asset is that loving God you taught me about that I never brought in here. I never brought no loving God in here. I hurt and I hate, and well-meaning people said, you know, let go and let God. I said, what? I said, turn it over to God. I said, what? I said, pray to God. Oh, I said, fuck off. If I pray to him, he'll know where I am. You know, I wasn't going to pray to no God that was going to get me for everything I did. Everything I did, God was going to get me for it. They told me, God will get you for that. God will get you for that. Don't play with that. God will strike you blind. You know? So, uh, I mean, anybody ever heard those, those wonderful words growing up? Anybody ever hear anybody say, what is wrong with you? <laughs> what is fucking wrong with you? What's wrong with you? The hell's wrong with you? <clears throat> and they would ask me what's wrong with me as if I knew. What is wrong with you? Oh, actually, I've got a twofold disease. It's an obsession of the mind, allergy of the body. I can't control my using. I don't know what's wrong with me. What's wrong with you? Why do you do what you do? Why don't you do what I do? Because I don't know, see? I have no idea why I do what I do, but I do since I came back here. I came in here very sick, but I'm not sick now. I wrote a word, sick, S-I-C-K, spiritually ill can kill. And that's what I was, I was spiritually defunct. The dilemma was the separation from the spirit. And, and, and when I reconnected with the spirit, I straightened out mentally and physically, you know, and I had to learn this stuff. I didn't know it and I didn't bring it in here with me. You know, and uh, I had to hit bottom first. And I didn't know anything about hitting bottom, but I do today. H-I-T-B-O-T-T-O-M. Hurting inside, totally burnt out, turned to our master. I didn't know this disease had gotten me to turn away from the master. But hitting bottom is the same for all of us, not different. There's no unity in being different, like we say in our meetings. But hitting bottom was the same for all of us. And that's that time in desperation that I had when I got here. The gift of desperation happens to spell G-O-D, God. And, and, and I can remember very clearly going, help me, please help me. What's wrong with me? Because I didn't know. But you guys did. And you guys wrapped your arms around me and loved me. And you've been continuing to love me ever since. I'm really grateful for that. And, and, and if you're wondering whether you is or whether you isn't a real addict or not, I'll give you a little clue. I've heard some laughter in here tonight. They say, if you're laughing, you're relating. And if you're relating to a sick bastard like me, there ain't no doubt about you, pal, I tell you that. <laughs> I don't get through to no well people. Well people don't laugh at my shit. <laughs> my mum doesn't laugh at my shit. I used to come home every year to see me mum, she's passed now, but I'd come home every year and I'd say, Mum, I'm 34 years clean. She'd say, so is the cat. You know? <laughs> she never give me no pat on the back, we're not doing something I shouldn't have done anyway. But we do, don't we? We come here, don't we? We come together to do together what we couldn't do apart. And those loving gods that are, that are... Look, you know, there may be, I don't know, they said there was 50 or something people here. There may be 50 different concepts of God right here, right now. Whatever you believe in is okay with us. We don't care whether you're atheist, whether you're agnostic, whatever you are. Whatever you are is okay with us and whatever you believe in that makes sense to you is okay with us too. You know why? Because all the gods, no matter what kind of god you got, has got something in common with everybody else's. You know what that is? 
All the gods send their addicts here. That's good <laughs> shit, isn't it? Because here's the power they provided for an addict to not have to use today. And we can take this power. Where are we here? Hmm? Southgate? Southgate. Southgate. <laughs> if we ain't got a power in this room right here, right now, that we can take out there and we suffer from a disease that makes me do what I don't want to do, if we ain't got a power in here that we can take out there to combat the power of the disease like we do have, and we go out there and this disease makes us... I don't think Southgate's ready for 50 addicts to go out and get shit-faced tonight. You know? <laughs> so we must have a power. So I don't walk around here claiming to be powerless. Why would I claim the power when I've got all this power? In and of myself I was helpless, hopeless and powerless, but I'm not in and of myself. <clears throat> I'm here with you. I turned back to God and, and asked for help. He sent me to you. Here's a power greater than myself. You give me a book, a sponsor, you know, a, a design for living, a blueprint for life, a way of life where I ain't got to have a use up. I got so much bloody power over this disease today, I don't know what to do with it. I said to my sponsor, what should I do with all this power I got over my addiction? He said, give it away. Go down there at Southgate, give it to them. Don't worry, they won't want it. <laughs> you know. So I'm, I'm here and I'm glad, and I'm glad to be one among many and I love being here, you know, and I love being an active member. It's by far the greatest thing I do on a daily basis. And I hope I encourage you to stick around and become an old fart in Narcotics Anonymous. Namaste. Thank you. I'm Robert Manadix. <laughs>